Hi, welcome to today's math video, which is going to prepare us for National Pie Day, March 14. I'll never forget Pie Day last year, 2020. It was a beautiful rainy day here in Southern California, and we were in the middle of our Pie Day activities. It was Friday the 13th because Pie Day fell last year on Sabbath or Saturday. And in the middle of these activities, suddenly an announcement came out saying, everyone pack up, you're going to be going home. I didn't even think to send home their math manipulatives because, you know, how long would we be away from each other? Two weeks at most. I just remember telling them, pack as many deer books in those backpacks as you can. Sydney V, who was a very engaged student, very lively and enthusiastic, but more on the quiet side, suddenly in the loudest voice that she could muster said, hey, everyone, put your contact information on this piece of paper. She knew that we would need to keep in touch with each other. Some of the students started to cry. And so I went to the piano and I just started playing one of the songs that we love to sing, You Are My Hiding Place. And they immediately came to the piano and we sang and we sang and we sang. That was going to be the last time we'd get to sing together in our classroom. 11 months later and those students are still at home. But we keep hoping and praying that soon students everywhere will be where they belong, in a classroom with their teachers and their students. Now for Pi Day. My husband Stanley was a high school math teacher for over 25 years and he used to have fun celebrating Pi Day with eating pie, but also having a contest to see which students could recite the most digits of pie. And he was always adamant that the students bring their pies in square pans because you see the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. And he always thought that was wildly funny. So each year I do manage to have a few students bring square pies, but most of them will just bring round pies. I think there must be something that just feels morally wrong about baking a square pie. One year Drew used some leftover crust and cut out the, the symbol for pi and put that on top of his pie and that was really fun. The very first thing that I do each year is on March 1, I send home the digits of pi so that they can start practicing and they can use a song to memorize it or you know memorize it in little chunks of numbers and if they've memorized it with a song it's okay if they sing their song for us on pi day. As long as they're saying the digits in order that's all that matters. The very first activity that I do is I get those paper plates that are good for absolutely nothing and um, except this, they're really good for this activity and we flatten out the, the plates and then we learn the parts of a circle. I got this idea from Pinterest a few years ago. Chord, arc, center point, of course diameter, radius, circumference and then I have them um, figure out, and I teach them how to calculate the, the circumference and the um, area of a circle. So that's a really great introduction activity for pi. And then another activity that I like to do, and I also got this on Pinterest, and all you'll need is some yarn and uh, tape measures, and I like to use the metric one so that we can do our measuring with um, centimeters and millimeters. But they're going to take their yarn and wrap it around the circumference of their object and then cut it. Then they're going to take that cut piece and measure out the diameter and then cut that diameter. Measure it out again, cut it. Measure it out again, cut it. And if they've done it correctly, they should end up with three lengths of the diameter plus a little extra. That's that 0.14. And it's the perfect time to remind your students that fractions and decimals really are interchangeable. They just mean that extra, that extra bit. Then another fun thing I like to do is teach them the Greek alphabet. So I give them each a copy of the Greek alphabet. And it's interesting to note that pi is the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet, just like P is the 16th letter of our alphabet. And something we always like to do is I give them a card and then they try to write as best they can their name in Greek, what their name might be like. 
there are so many fun little tidbits about Pi. And I used to give the students those tidbits myself, but now that they have their Chromebooks, um, I'm thinking of letting them do their own research on Pi. Something that is fun, you might know this already, if you write out 3.14 and hold it into a mirror, it will spell out the word Pi. A few other interesting facts that I can remember are um, Albert Einstein was born on on Pi Day, Stephen Hawking passed away on Pi Day. Uh, Givenchy has a perfume called Pi. It is said to help the intellectual man be more attractive, and I found it at Sephora for $96. Another fact is that if we were to nonstop recite all the known digits of Pi, it would take 133 years. And these are just some of the fun things that I would like to suggest that you have your students put them on little index cards and um, then they can share those facts with their families at dinner. Oh, I just remembered another one. Our birthdays are all found somewhere in Pi. Then um, another thing that I like to do is a few years ago I found on Teachers Pay Teachers a set of math stations. It looks like this. It was $4 and it's by the Math Giraffe and it's written for grades 7 to 8. But my 6th graders were able to handle it and I know that my 4th graders will be able to do fine with it too. And um, you don't have to do all the activities but it does provide many, many different activities for you to choose from. Another simple pie activity I found on Pinterest recently was to just give students a page full of different size circles and have them decorate the circles. I thought, you know, I think I need a day of just therapeutically um, designing circles in, in fun ways. I think that would be really good for my mental health too. And then of course, you know about the book series about circumference. And I, I personally only have this, this one, but she has written many, many books in this series. You only need to Google circumference and the first round table. It's a delightful story with Lady Diameter and their little son, Radius. And you can either have these books out for the students to read at a station, or you can do them for read aloud for several days before and after Pi Day. And another series that I just bought a couple of last year is Pythagoras and the Ratios. And the students really enjoy these books too. I will tell you that my first year of Pi Day did not go really well because I planned to do all my activities on March 14. And you already can see why that would not go well. They were learning about Pi on that first day and then being expected to do activities surrounding Pi. So I quickly learned that I needed to make a whole week of Pi and I don't use Pi for the whole math lesson. I try to do about 30 minutes a day of Pi activities leading up to, to Pi Day and that has worked so much, so much better for me. Now what does Pi Day actually look like? Well, of course we eat our pies and then we have our contest. And that list that I pass out to the students, I have them take out that list and I have them follow along with me as the students recite and then we just stop um, when they either make a mistake or repeat a digit. And I would caution you to make sure you talk to your students early on about how this is supposed to be a fun activity, not some you know, super competitive thing. It's just for fun. And so we don't want any tears on Pi Day. We, we want just encouragement and, and camaraderie. And then the student who has the winning number of recited digits gets to go home with a pie. And in the past, I've always gone to the bakery and bought an expensive $20 pie. But I think this year, I'm just going to go to the market and get um, an apple pie from, from their you know, standard brands of pie, and I don't think anybody is going to complain, but it sure is fun to go home with, with the winning pie. And then I also um, give them a certificate with their name on it, and my husband has put this certificate, which you can edit, and this piece of paper, he's put these both on Teachers Pay Teachers for you. But he asked me to tell you, the links will be in the comment section below for you, but if you don't use the link, he said to make sure to tell you not to just try to find me by typing in 
Pi activities in the scroll bar of Teachers Pay Teachers because there are just so many that you'll get lost. So just put in my name, Deneen Matsuda, and then you will be able to print those off for free. Now, what is the winning number of digits? When I first started doing this, the, the student who won uh, got 56 digits, and I was so pleased and proud of that student. 2019, Josh, uh, said 108 digits and how interesting that I don't have the record from last year anywhere I can't find it anywhere that was just such a traumatic day for us that who knows I don't even remember I have no recollection of even the recit recitation part maybe we didn't even get to it maybe we we canceled school before we even got to that part that could be the problem and then for my final culminating activity um, at the beginning of the week, I tell my students that they're going to need to bring something circular from home. And it's really fun to see what they come up with. It can be, you know, a bicycle tire, a Frisbee, a, a Tupperware lid, anything round. And this is one area where your students at home will probably have the most fun because they'll have so many interesting um, objects to choose from. But we make a chart just like this where we have the object the circumference, uh, the diameter, and then just the formula or the ratio, circumference over diameter. And then we go ahead and we um, do the math for our objects. For example, if I have a bicycle tire, right, I'll write bicycle tire here, I'll use a piece of yarn and measure the circumference, and I usually have them do it in metric, and then the diameter, and then with the calculator, they'll divide their circumference by the diameter. And guess what that number will always be if we've done it correctly? Yes, it will be pi. And after they've done several of those different objects, you know, they'll think, what, are you serious? This one too, and that, it's always gonna be pi? Yes, that ratio of circumference to diameter will always be pi. And those are some of the fun activities that I spend the weeks leading up to pi and then pi day doing. And it's just a fun day to celebrate math. And um, I, I like to uh, wear a, a math t-shirt on that day. I don't have a big supply of math t-shirts, but I try to, you know, dress math in, on that day. I think last year I, I bought a t-shirt that says, show your work. That, that's my big math t-shirt for now. Pi Day 2020 didn't end up being the final day that I would get to sing with my students because in May, those wonderful students decided to descend upon my home and the home of Mrs. Kendall, the other sixth grade teacher, and, su and to surprise us. And what did they want to do when they arrived? They wanted to sing. And thankfully, my piano is right by the window, so I opened the window wide and we sang and we sang. And when that was done, they yelled out, read aloud. And so we read together, not through a screen, and when that was done, they all said, math station's next. Well, I couldn't figure out how to pull that off. So instead, I said, would you like to see my garden? And we walked to the back. And when they saw this useless embankment that we have that is just a thorn in our side, they all yelled, P.E., that can be our P.E. And then I showed them our vegetable garden where my husband has built these beautiful uh, boxes and... Um, there were strawberries and they started to eat those and they said, hot lunch. And when that was done, they said, Mrs. Matsuda, can we just come tomorrow? Can we come tomorrow and just have school? And they didn't leave until we had said our mitzvah together. We didn't sign up to be teachers because we thought it was easy. We signed up because we knew that it was an important work and that students mattered. And so until we're together again next week, I leave you with the reminder that you are a math person and you are enough. Goodbye.